All right, guys, uh, we're going to be doing a little bit something different on this week's episode of The Suited Shootist. This week, uh, we get to guess whether or not I'm wearing pants. No, just kidding. Um, we are going to continue the Being Basic series, and we're going to touch on another subject of mine that I'm a big fan of, which is cocktails. Uh, I'm sure a couple of y'all are out there raising your eyebrows right now, trying to figure out how this kind of plays into everything I've been talking about up to this point. And since the focus of what I talk about is all these social aspects of carrying a firearm, well, there are some of those social instances where alcohol may be involved. And so uh, there's some tie on So stick with me, trust me on it, and it'll, it'll make sense in a minute. So the number one thing, anytime we start getting into anything dealing with alcohol, step number one is gonna be ditch the heater because obviously alcohol and firearms don't mix. So this is going away and getting locked up. So what we're going to do is I'm going to touch on a couple of my favorite drinks that focus on some of the kind of basic cocktail skills that I think everybody should know. And it's also going to give you a chance to play with a couple of things to just develop your tastes, understand what you like, and the other part of it is, like I talked about in a previous video, it's good to have some non-firearms related hobbies, you know, whether it's gardening, whether it's motorcycles, the French call it joie de vie, the Italians call it la dolce vita, Russians call it vodka, I don't know, they're not a very joyful people. <laughs> um, but for me, one of the things that I enjoy is cocktails. So the first one that I'm going to start off with is going to be a classic whiskey sour. Um, it's a great way to introduce somebody to whiskey who might not be a big liquor drinker, uh, whether that's you, whether that's a friend. Uh, if you're out somewhere and you don't know what to order, this is a great option. So the way it starts out is going to be three quarters of an ounce of simple syrup and you can either buy it or make it. There's plenty of recipes online. I'm not really gonna go into a ton of detail on that, but um, it's really just sugar and water. Lemon juice, fresh squeezed, is definitely gonna make a difference here. So um, if you don't feel like juicing one every time you, you wanna make a cocktail, throw a few in a squeeze bottle. It's easy enough to do. We're gonna go with an ounce and a half of your preferred whiskey in this case. I've got quite a few bottles to choose from, so I grabbed my Four Roses small batch. And then this is the part that weirds some people out, but it really does give you a great texture, and it is an egg white. So we're gonna go ahead and add that in, and we're gonna just let it sit for about 10 seconds. Let the lemon juice kind of break up the protein, and then we're gonna give it a shake before we add ice. Now, while I'm waiting on that and while I'm doing this, I talked about kind of the social aspect of a cocktail. And one of the reasons why I think it's beneficial to do this at home is, well, number one, it helps you to kind of figure out what your limits are. Uh, especially if you're not a big drinker, it's a good idea to know how much you can handle if you're out and about. So that way you don't find yourself kind of outside of your comfort zone. Once we do the dry shake, we're gonna take one big cube of ice, throw that in there, and we're gonna finish the shake. The other thing is, is that Cocktail culture, weirdly enough, there's a lot of crossover. Um, a lot of gun dudes like liquor. Um, Craig Douglas is pretty fond of talking about a lot of this, and uh, I know that he has kind of become a fixture at one of his local bars. Um, I had a chance to meet his bartender at the Range Master Tactical Conference, which was kind of cool. Typically, this is gonna be served in a stemmed glass, but you do see it served on the rocks as well. And 
that nice froth on top is what the egg white buys you. If you want to be real fancy with it, you can do some kind of design on the top with some Angostura and uh, you can take a cocktail pick or something else like that. This is going to be your whiskey sour. And yes, you're going to see me drinking these as I'm making them. So watch the whole video. This could get interesting. While I am kind of putting this stuff away, something that I've talked about, if you've seen on my Instagram, is if you are going to be in a position where you're going to be out drinking, there are still things that you can do to make sure that you are appropriately protected. Um, I think it is kind of amusing that we're doing this on um, the birthday of Jeff Cooper because he was fond of saying, you're no more so armed because you own a handgun than you are a musician because you own a violin. And I think that there's a lot of wisdom to that. What you got to keep in mind is, is that just because you have the tool set doesn't mean that you are immediately capable. I can give you a framing hammer, but that doesn't mean that you're equipped to build a house. So the mindset piece of it, which Cooper was huge on, you're familiar with the color codes and all that, really plays big into all of this. And so for me personally, if I find myself out drinking somewhere, I know I'm going to be going where I'm going to be consuming alcohol, then the guns get put up, but I still always have my trusty palm pepper spray, and this can go places that firearms are prohibited, either by policy or by law. Unless there's a metal detector, that thing's coming with me. So the whiskey sour is a good representation of a traditional shaken cocktail. The nice thing about it is you can play with how much lemon juice, how much simple syrup, and how much whiskey, what kind of whiskey, and really tailor it to suit your tastes. You can do it with scotch, you can do it with Irish whiskey, bourbon is obviously my preferred, but this is a great option even for people that aren't big liquor drinkers. Uh, I can mix these for my wife, and she, before we met, pretty much exclusively drank Malibu and pineapple, which is diabetes in a glass. So, the next cocktail is going to be of the stirred variant, and there were a lot of different options that I had entertained for this. What I decided to go with is a Martinez, which you'd think would be a martini with tequila, but it's still a gin cocktail. It's just a little bit different than your traditional kind of dry martini. The other thing that I like about this is it's going to give you a way to explore gin without having to deal with that mouthful of Christmas and hate uh, pine needle juniper flavor that a lot of people find off-putting. Just like with the whiskey sour, you can play with the ratios of this to really suit your taste, and you can trade out the type of gin. The only weird ingredient on this one is going to be maraschino liqueur, which honestly is not unusual. Any decent liquor store is going to have it on the shelf. And so, even if you're not a gin fan, I definitely recommend checking this out because it's a good way to, to kind of expand your palate. So, what we're going to do with this one is start off with a couple of dashes of your orange bitters of choice. And then just a bar spoon of the maraschino. It's about a quarter ounce. And uh, they do offer it in smaller bottles if you are so inclined. One other thing that I recommend if you're just getting into cocktails is 
taste your individual ingredients while you're mixing the drink, and then see if you can pick them out when you're sipping on the final product. What that's gonna do for you is give you an appreciation of what every piece brings to the table. So then if you wanna start improvising, you can kind of do that on your own. So we've got the orange bitters and the maraschino in here already. Then it's gonna be equal parts sweet vermouth. And this is what makes the gin a little friendlier because this is sweet and is gonna kinda of cut down on some of the harsh edges of the gin. Now, on the thumbnail, I, I pulled a little bit of a bait and switch um, and I used all that bottle of Bombay Sapphire. I'm using a local gin. You can see it's got some color to it. It spent a little bit of time in a barrel. And so if you've got a barrel aged gin that you can get your hands on, I would recommend it for this, but nobody knows what that is. So I figured for the thumbnail, just use the immediately recognizable form, but sub it out with what you got on hand. See what you like. So uh, you'll notice that I pulled most of these bottles as well as the glasses out of the, free, out of the fridge. And you want to make sure that everything is appropriately chilled because that's going to make things go a whole lot easier. Uh, and so just keep that in mind when you're doing this. It's a stirred cocktail. This is one thing that people tend to overlook. Um, doesn't matter if you're stirring or if you are shaking. Your ice is an ingredient as much as it is part of the uh, part of the, the, the hardware. So you want to make sure the ice is fresh so it's not all freezer funky. And you want to make sure the right amount of it is melted. So that, that way, if you, if, you're, if you don't stir it enough, you don't shake it enough, it's going to be off. It's going to be too harsh or too sweet. If you over stir it, then it's just going to be watered down and lame. And you're going to want to pour it down the drain or you feel like the bartender ripped you off. So getting a feel for how much water belongs in a drink is definitely something that just takes a little bit of practice. Um, you don't need a fancy stirring glass like this. You can do it in one of those shaker tins. You can do it in a regular pint glass. You can do it in a red solo cup. Um, I have enough of an affinity for a cocktail that I decided to get the, you know, the, the nice barware, but it's certainly not critical. Uh, bar spoon is handy, but again, you can do this with a skewer. Uh, I've done it with a butter knife before, so don't feel like you need the specialized gear as long as you've got ice, something to put the ice and the liquor in and something to stir it with that is reasonably sanitary, uh, that's really all you need. And so this one, stirred drinks are typically served with no ice. And since I did my job right, it's not quite up to the rim, but almost. So that is a good indication along with the chill on the outside of that mixer that I got everything where I needed it to be. Now with this one, you definitely get kind of this balance of kind of the berry flavor and a little bit of the astringency of the vermouth, but then you also start tasting the different herbs and spices that were in the gin. Um, the maraschino is kind of sucking the moisture out of my tongue a little bit. I like that. I'm one of those weird freaks that likes kind of medicinal cocktails. Um, but you can, of course, leave it out entirely if you don't want to mess with it or whatever. So as I'm sipping on this one, um, again, the entire point of this being basic series is just really the idea that it doesn't matter what aspect of your life we're talking about, whether it is your pistol skills, whether it's your cocktail skills, whether it is how you compose your wardrobe, or whether it is your professional life. As long as you master a handful of basic fundamental techniques, that's really all you need to do to execute things successfully. It's gonna give you a foundation to where you can start branching off and playing with things, but it always gives you something to fall back on. 
without having to think about it or freak out or worry. It was like, oh my God, what am I going to do here? When it comes to all of this, again, in the, the public forum, the other reason why I really think that drinking in general kind of ties in with the self-defense community is uh, just the fact that there's a lot of stupid human tricks that go on in bars, you know, where there's where there's drinking because people get goofy if they, especially if they overindulge, or if they're out with a bunch of their friends and they feel like they need to posture up and save face to avoid either looking foolish or looking weak or or what have you. So it's not just the alcohol itself, but it's being socially fluent enough to be able to operate in a drinking culture without drawing attention to yourself so that way you can kind of still be the gray man. But in the same token, you can also enjoy yourself because there was a period where I hated going anywhere where there were large crowds. Uh, there was a concert that I went to where genuinely as it was letting out, I'm fairly certain I had a mild panic attack just because I was so strung out of trying to maintain a certain level of alertness and personal space and all this, and it was exhausting. Uh, I can tell you that after having experienced some of the training that I have, it allows you to develop an understanding of a certain social temperature. And what I mean by that is it doesn't matter where you're at, whether you're at your office, whether you're at your favorite watering hole, whether you're at a nightclub, whether you're at a concert, you get a feel for what that ambient noise level and kind of just what the what the ambient social temperature is. Uh, so that way you can key in on anything that'll deviate from that. If things get excessively quiet or excessively loud, if there are uncharacteristic noises, you know that that can be something that may warrant a little bit more attention. But you're not having to live in condition orange because it's exhausting and honestly it's kind of bullshit. Uh, everybody is going to have circumstances where they catch themselves sleeping. It's happened to me. It's going to happen to you. And it's just a matter of understanding how to prioritize your attention levels. So don't limit yourself. It doesn't necessarily have to be about bars. It can be international travel. It can be museums. There are a whole litany of places that you can go. You can't necessarily bring your firearm, but those places can still offer very enriching experiences. And there are the people that will choose to just um, only let the, uh, the firearm dictate where and how they live their lives. And that's their business. I personally find it a little bit limiting. Um, so being able to navigate all that is definitely something worthwhile. Another kind of tool of the drinking trade for me uh, that I always carry anytime I'm out and about is my Boston Leather Midget Sap. Uh, this is, again, something that can go virtually anywhere as long as there's not a metal detector. And if not that, some kind of improvised impact weapon is handy to have if you are either out of the country or somewhere where there are security aspects to, to consider as well. So the last drink that I'm going to do, because I know this is getting a little drawn out, is a Queens Park Swizzle. It's basically just a fancy mojito. It's actually become my drink for the summer. I'm a huge fan of it. Um, and again, it just starts adding a little bit more dimension to things. This is going to be the example of a drink that's built in the glass. So that way the only thing that you're messing up is the glass that you're serving this in. This one's going to be a rum drink. And so it, uh, again, rum, there's a whole bunch of things that you can explore there. And this really opens itself up to being able to explore the different aspects of that spirit. 
So what we're going to do is you're going to take a few mint leaves. Typically it says, you know, three or four. These are a little on the small side. So I'm going to go ahead and just take a small handful in the bottom of the glass. Bring my simple syrup back in. So that. And an ounce of fresh lime juice. This is where a lot of people will make their mistake is when it comes to muddling, you don't want to mash it to shit and you don't want to shred it because then instead of just getting the mint, you're gonna get this kind of grass clippings taste in the drink. So just gently press it a little bit to kind of get the feel, you know, to, to get the, the mint oil into the liquid. From that point, two ounces Traditionally, it calls for a dark rum, so that's what I'm using right now. The only thing that I would say is don't use a spice drum, like don't use Kraken or Captain Morgan or anything like that, but uh, whatever you got on hand, have some fun with it. And then, crushed ice. This is where the swizzle part comes in. So we're going to go about halfway up with ice and then actually break out a swizzle stick. Again, you can do this with a bar spoon, just about anything. This works good for mint juleps too, but basically you're trying to build up a frost on the glass. So once you got that, just going to kind of top it off with crushed ice. Top that with Angostura. Like I said, it's basically a fancy mojito. It's a great summer drink. It's a great way to just learn about the different kinds of rum. And it's also a nice way to get an appreciation for Angostura because you see that in a lot of cocktails, but I don't think people really appreciate what it tastes like. So, this is probably my favorite at the moment. Um, what I'm gonna go ahead and do is in the description, I will put full recipes for each of the cocktails, as well as links to the pepper spray and to the sap that are my constant drinking companions. But again, don't get too hung up on just the defensive aspects of life because the entire idea behind this is that we, we carry these tools to protect and preserve our lives. The idea being that the life that we live is worth protecting and, and worth preserving. So make sure that it's not going to be something where you spend so much time focused on being ready for that one, sh you know, one shot that you don't go out and have some fun once in a while because you know, the reality is, is life's gonna throw enough bullshit at us as it is. I mean, this whole COVID-19 thing is a prime example that it's good to be able to just go out and blow off some steam once in a while. So I know this is a little bit of a departure, but again, the focus of everything is simply this. Whatever aspect of your life it is, focus on the basics. Once you get them down, it's going to make everything beyond that so much easier. So I'm going to go 
finish this and uh, hopefully everybody has a great week. Let me know what you thought of this one. If you want to see more of this kind of stuff, if you'd rather I just stick to the shooty, punchy, fighty stuff, let me know. Hope everybody has a, uh, a good time and stay safe.